Hey everybody, what's up? It's me, it's Richard. I'm back with another video. If you're new here, my name is Richard Keycott. I make videos about fragrances, then I take it from there. I just wanna thank everyone who's watching, who has been watching, to new subscribers, I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. And everyone else who's been here since the beginning or somewhere along the way, it means a lot, thank you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead, subscribe to this channel, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. Leave me a comment, it's really fun for me. It's great, like every time you post a video and like people start watching it, you get to have this whole sort of like very interactive engagement with people and it's fun. And people are passionate about fragrances, so I like to connect to that passion in other folks and myself. Today we have a haul. I don't even know how to explain this haul, what to say about it. All I can say is I bought so many fragrances, okay, a lot. I bought way too many fragrances. And so many that like, I can't buy anymore right now. I have to stop. So I have stopped. All of these fragrances I bought the last couple days of June. Oh my God, there's too many. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. All right, I've got 14 fragrances here that I do not know what to do with. I've actually sort of tested every single one of these fragrances. So maybe this video won't be too long. Um, there's some fragrances here that I've always wanted and finally I got and I'm really excited about that. Did they all work out? Mm, no, not really. Some of them have been kind of disappointing. Let's start with a disappoint. Mm, permiso, permiso. Flora Botanica. Okay, this is like huge on YouTube. People seem to love this fragrance and I paid basically full price for it. I mean, whether I'm paying full price or getting things at a deal, there are expectations. This is a rose cannabis mint fragrance and people seem to be obsessed with it. Like, it's like a love-hate thing, I think, and some people really, really love it. For me, I'm just like, what's the big deal? Yeah, initially, that smells wonderful. You get the rose. It's not as, like, bright and crispy as, like, I tend to like some rose fragrances, although I like rose fragrances across the spectrum. For something that's supposed to be so refreshing, so great in summer, at least that's, like, you know, what I've heard about it, it's not resonating, folks. <laughs> I don't even really get the cannabis note. It's a gorgeous fragrance. Is it like, yeah, it smells good. It's fresh. It's rosy. It, it is green. Um, but, you know, I've wore it. I haven't gotten great longevity out of it. I'm happy to have it. I don't think I need to declutter it. I'll wear it. But it's the kind of thing that I just want more from. So I don't know how they would pump this up. Like, I don't know what's missing from it and what would make it more substantial for me. Maybe the green needs to be amped up. The rose needs to be amped up. Um, this is a nice, fresh, watery rose. If I really love a fragrance in this haul, I will go into the notes with y'all, okay? Got a little French translation page on the go here. This is Le Ote, which is Tea Island. This is by Anique Coutal. So, Anique Coutal fragrances. Um, I think they're supposed to be well-made, you know, have good ingredients. I haven't had great luck with them. I've gone through about, I think I've had about six of them at different times. I gave a couple to my mom because I bought them and I just knew right away, although they smelled really wonderful and sweet, that wasn't gonna totally be wearing them. And that was like Petit Cherie and um, another thing. Maybe I gave her one of the Eau de Hadrian's because I had two. Um, I still have Eau de Hadrian and Bois de Hadrian, but um, there's no lasting power in them. So those are on my declutter list. Or um, if not, because I just, I give things away all the time. I haven't managed to be able to sell anything. I'm trying to sell my bottle of Nudie Florum by Nasamato on Facebook Marketplace. Nobody's wanted it yet. God, I just have to say, I hate that fragrance. I hate it. It's such a disappointment. I would say that Nudie Florum is like the most major disappointment I've had in recent memory. I also want to check in about another fragrance that was newish for me, and that's Close Up by Olfactive Studios. I've recently worn that out and my gosh, it is amazing. Close Up by Olfactive Studios. It's cherry, it's delicious. It's got some cinnamon in there. It's just, um, and I wore it like on a cool summer night, but God, that fragrance was amazing. Uh, fragrance was amazing. My lips, sorry. Okay. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know what this gives me? This gives me like, um, I just like the way this smells. So I don't know if this is like a superstar masterpiece, like magnificent thing, but for me, it just checks boxes that I like to be checked. You know, like this is giving me something I want to smell. Right now, I'm getting like a really, really, really strong, beautiful, rich tea note with like gray flannel by Jeffrey Bean. That's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah, it's got a powerful opening which makes me really like it. I have Russian tea by Mask Milano, and I was maybe hoping that the tea note would be more like what's in here. And this you've got mandarin, orange, and citruses in the top. Middle notes are tea, mandarin, blossoms, and osmanthus. And then the base note is white musk. It's fresh. Ooh, sorry, Richard. <laughs> yeah, I think because that tea is just really so like, yeah, unctuous, but it's not syrupy. Look, I've only just had this, and that's how much I've used just spraying it. So, you know what? I have to say, my new Catals, uh, I'm moving them to this section of my fragrance collection, which is uh, in the closet in my bedroom. It's not in the wardrobe here. And those are my eau de colognes, which I'm just spraying after a shower and not expecting much out of, except for a really great moment when I'm spraying them and like, you know, the few minutes afterwards while, usually while my skin is drying out of the shower. So I'm gonna move this, I think, to that section. and. It will do well there. Keep in mind, I got this fragrance for like $20. So it usually sells for like a hundred bucks, maybe more. And if I paid that, I'd literally be poking my eyeballs out right now. I have Photo by Lagerfeld. This is a fragrance I wore when I was a kid. As you can see, the lid is messed up. This is enough to truly, truly drive me crazy. Okay, listen, I have a bottle of Leur Bleu by Guerlain that came without a cap, which I would never purposely buy something without a cap. So I bought a empty bottle of a Guerlain fragrance in the same style bottle for like $25 <laughs> so that I could have the cap or else I don't know what to do with it. I've got to get rid of it or something. Anyways, the cap came, it was for um, a bigger bottle and it didn't fit. So now I have that random cap. This really drives me nuts that this cap is not working on this. It's supposed to look like that. Anyhow, I thought if I really hated it, I could pass it on and maybe I could just use the lid for my Lagerfeld photo. But the thing is, this lid doesn't truly fit, but I guess I am getting it on. Could I put this lid inside there? No. So I thought maybe I could do something like that and then I could sleep at night. I tried this a few times and I really can get a handle on it. At first, it reminded me of that fragrance Bichon, and I just thought this is some dumb ass, like old style smelling men's fragrance that doesn't even really have much to it. You know what I mean? What's the point? I tried it a few nights ago and I really tried it. I really sprayed it on my arm and I kept going back and like testing it, really smelling it and see how it was developing and stuff like that. In this fragrance, you've got a lot of notes. You've got aldehydes, tarragon, sage, bergamot, lemon, green notes, tobacco, sandalwood, orris root, patchouli, rose, cedar, jasmine, amber, vanilla, musk, tonka bean, and oak moss. That's a lot of notes. I had to really wear it on my skin to get a vibe of it. And yeah, like when it first hits, I was actually getting like tarragon, anise sort of traditional men's fragrance, uh, powdery. Um, and, and it is those things. It does smell like a traditional men's fragrance, but I would say that like there's more to it than I initially thought. And I do see occasions where I'd wear this. And for me, this would be like in the summer, maybe for like a semi-formal kind of thing in the morning. That's very specific. <laughs> but that would be when I would think of smelling like this. There, a lot of people have a lot to say about this and some people truly, truly love it and say that it's very un unexpected, the way that it like performs on the skin and what happens and how it transitions. I would say that I agree with a lot of people that it's on the skin where it really comes alive. I mean, fragrances are made to be worn on the skin, so obvi, but it's on the skin where it comes alive and on the skin you get a creamy woodiness that you don't really get just from spraying it on the paper. I've come around to this fragrance. I'm happy to have it. Classic Lagerfeld. I was on Fragrantica and what I did, I just typed in in the notes section, cherry and rhubarb. One of the fragrances that came up was this and I was already on my like Lagerfeld thing because I was trying to find a cap for a Lagerfeld photo. If anyone has one, please help me out. And I had just purchased this, the classic Lagerfeld. When I saw that this Lagerfeld Femme had cherry and rhubarb in it, two of my most obsessive notes, like I'm just so into them so much. Um, I had to get it. Yeah, like, I don't know, this one is weird. 
yeah, okay. I was hoping for a rhubarb cherry sort of bomb. This was actually launched in 2000, but it's giving me like 90s vibes. 90s kind of freshy. Yeah, I did wear it on the skin, like tested it on the skin, and I honestly can't remember what happened. I would say this is a weird one. Um, if you're buying it because of rhubarb and cherry, I mean, doesn't really deliver on those. The Lagerfeld writer, which makes more sense, is saying green tangerine, sparkling lemon. Like that's, yeah, that makes more closer to what I'm sniffing. Lightly detergenty, fresh kind of, I don't know. It's not what I wanted it to be. And the opening is like, I don't know if it's because it's old, but you got to give it a few minutes because right away it's just like alcohol. I will probably give this away to someone. That fragrance is small different for everybody. So I'm saying all these things about it and you think, well, why would you give that to someone you don't even like it? And it's not that I don't like it. It doesn't smell bad. It's just like what I was getting it for, like a spot that I wanted this to fill, it doesn't fill. But for someone else, it might. Also, it could smell totally different to someone else. Look, I'm getting a surgery on my nose next week. So I have like a deviated septum. I can't truly breathe through my nose. I'm getting a septoplasty and a turbinate reduction. And I have like a really big hole from having my nose pierced. Ugh. Not like I love nose piercings, but gross to the hole. And yeah, I got beat up after I got my nose pierced and the earring went like right through my nose. So I've always had a huge hole there. I can camouflage it. Obviously when there's an earring in there, you can't see it. But the thing is, is like, I just hate that without the earring, there's a huge hole. And most people they're, you know, when you have a piercing and then you don't use it, it just closes up and it hardly leaves even a spot. So yeah, I'm getting that sewn up along the way. I was like, just throw that in while I'm getting these airways fixed. Saying that to say this, maybe I'm gonna have a whole new nose after I come out of this and things will smell so much different. In Shalimar, you get top notes of citruses, bergamot, lemon, mandarin orange, cedar. Middle notes in Shalimar, iris, patchouli, vetiver, jasmine, and rose. Base notes are incense, vanilla, leather, apopanax, civet, sandalwood, tonka bean, and musk. That's what I get through the whole thing, is the base. People are always talking about this as like a citrusy fragrance, and um, for me, I don't, I'm not hit with a lot of citrus. Like what I'm hit with is like sweet, woody, deep. That's what I'm getting out of this. I get, you know, like that slightly animalic tone, but I get, I get like that sweet, leather, spicy, powdery, gorgeous. This is obviously a classic for a reason. It's been around for a long time. It seems to me like very butch, very butch queen, very butch femme. I love it. Really happy to finally have this and I'm definitely gonna get like a lot of wear out of this. Went down a rabbit hole. Gosh, gotta stop that. Well, you know how a lot of people here, um, people like to keep Pink Sugar by Aqualina in their collection. It's like a love-hate thing and I guess it's really affordable and it's just a fragrance that is like original in its way, I think, that really burnt sugar thing that people like. So they, a lot of people keep a bottle of Pink Sugar by Aqualina. Now I didn't think that was gonna be something I would do but they did have some men's fragrances and sometimes I think um, when a line that really doesn't do like masculine stuff does some masculine things, it could be interesting. So I saw that there was a couple. There was Steel Sugar, which I got, and Blue Sugar, which actually Fragrance Buy has a bottle of it right now that's like a 300 ml bottle that you would use to decant into other bottles for $45. Other people are selling it on eBay for like $300. And for a 50 ml of blue sugar on eBay, it's like 200 bucks. There's like a space and time where I would definitely like do that because I'm just like on the hunt for this thing. But I have to be real and say that I got steel sugar. I paid like $45 for it. You can't get testers of this without a cap for like 11. You know what, I'm not gonna go the blue sugar route, but I was just so curious. And I thought, well, what if this was like this kind of like gem that's like so good? and I would have to have it, and I'd be so happy to have it. And I even considered buying like the 300 ml like decanting bottle. Here's the thing, I'm not gonna live or die on steel sugar, nor blue sugar. This is giving me a very like traditional sort of masculine, sweet, woody, freshy. I feel like I smell cedar, maybe it's sandalwood, with the sweetness, and then it sort of just like dries down to like a sweet, nondescript, Woody scent. It's not bad, but it's not something I had to have. And this is definitely a case where my mind just like went way ahead of where I was actually at. Um, but at least it only cost me $45 to put it to rest. This is called Harmony. It's by Guru Perfumes. I've heard about Guru Perfumes from one person, um, the channel called Centaur. 
I believe he was talking about something called Sensation by Guru. And I think he was comparing it to like maybe a Ferragamo scent, maybe Gucci Guilty Absolute. I doubt it was the Gucci Guilty Absolute, probably Ferragamo. What does Harmony smell like? Well, just right now, I'm definitely getting like an aromatic vibe um, in a way that I like. So this is, yeah, it's kind of giving it to me right now. Are you acting up? Top notes in Harmony are lemon, mandarin orange, and sea notes. In the middle, you've got rosemary, thyme, tonka, and white flowers. Base notes are vanilla, patchouli, and amber. I think this is a good fragrance. I would say it's soft. I think some people might actually like really feel this in like a really distinct, definitive way, but maybe for me, because I have so many strong fragrances, that it does seem a little bit soft. But to be honest, there's absolutely no reviews for this on Fragrantica, and I don't even know if this company is still producing fragrances because it leads you to a website, and then when you click on that website, it's not there. But you can still find these out there, and I was just interested because it was called like Adi Guru and I don't know. I guess Centaur gave a pretty good um, recommendation on I think the fragrance that is called Sensation. Anyhow. This isn't a love, it's not a hate, it's a like, it's decent, um, we'll see what happens. This is a fragrance that I've really wanted for quite some time. This is Patchouli Patch by L'Artisan Parfumé. Girl, you're always trying it with me. Yeah, I have had not great luck with the feminine fragrances of L'Artisan Parfumé. In fact, I've gotta get rid of the two of them that I have, which is Rappel Trois and Haute Voltige. Disgusting. So Rappel Trois, when I hauled it, my first impression was like very good. I thought it was like actually even almost magical. I loved the way that it smelled, but when I wore it, I was like, mm-mm. I was getting like too much animalic vibes. And that's my thing with the female fragrances of Larger Zant Parfumer is like, it's like pissy or like even worse. But the men's fragrances I've tried, uh, Piment Brulant works for me. And now this Patchouli Patch, I like. I have to say, I've been highly influenced by the book Perfumes the Guide. Having said that, I also have to say that like people are so different, it's really hard to take anybody's experience with a fragrance as something that you might have a similar experience with. Perfumes the Guide lists many fragrances as like four or five stars and masterpieces. I've gotten a couple of them and I'm like, okay, was it that good? So here's Patchouli Patch. Ooh, okay. This is a great patchouli. It just reminds me of wearing patchouli when I was a teenager. Um, there's a certain age. I don't know if it happens to all groups of people and if it still happens in this day and age. When I was growing up, there was a period for every teenager where they got into music from like the 60s. So you discovered Janis Joplin, The Doors. Everybody was kind of like dressing like a hippie. Yeah, so this reminds me of just like patchouli oil from a head shop. I really like it. Yeah, I love it. It's just like a great patchouli scent. Oh, look, see, it's making me smile. It's making me feel good. Patchouli, like, you know, straight patchouli, it's a scent that I love. Um, it makes me comfortable. It makes me happy. I think I might actually have an older bottle of this as well. So, P.S. Original formulation. In this, you have top notes of patchouli, caraway, star anise, and white musk. Middle notes are patchouli, white musk, osmanthus, and iris. Base notes are sandalwood, vetiver, and cedar. It's just like a patchouli bomb. It's a great fragrance. I'm actually gonna wear it, yeah. Yeah, it's just giving me, it really smells like the patchouli of my youth. I'm sitting around, you know, listening to Janis Joplin. I just remember the first time I heard Janis Joplin's voice and you know, up until you hear it, there isn't really another voice that duplicates that voice beforehand. So yeah, I have so many memories and just things wrapped up with the scent of patchouli. And so that makes me really love this fragrance, but it's a really well-crafted fragrance and it's a patchouli bomb, patchouli patch. Next fragrance, it's my second ever from Montal. I have like four Manceras, only one Montal before this, which is Honey Oud. Okay, how do I say this fragrance? Okay, this is pronounced Embrun de Sawira. Is that good? It means spray from Esauhira. And I believe Esauhira is in Morocco. So this translates to like ocean spray or like the, you know, the spray of Morocco. This is a very interesting fragrance. It's really, really cool. It's an interesting take on salt. I have not sniffed anything just like this. Um, there's another salt fragrance I had called Sydney Rockpool, which is another really interesting take on salt. 
but this gives me more, more aromatic. This is like seawater, spicy notes, sandalwood, and musk. It's ozonic, it's got atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. This would be really, really great in like the height of summer, like right now. The sandalwood almost gives it like a honeyed wood tone and very salty, very like seawater. I mean, it's named after the spray of an ocean. It's really, really unique. Could be great on a rainy day. I think it's very polarizing too. Like definitely people are feeling this and then just as many people are not feeling this. It's quite unusual and I don't have anything like it. En grand de sauvira. Okay, France. Finally, I got Ragba Wood Intense and Ragba. You know, these are all over YouTube. I've heard a lot about them. I've wanted them for a long time. I finally got them. Yeah, I like this. To me, this is like, you know, Woody, woody, very, very sweet, but I don't find it too sweet. I actually find it really charming and attractive. And yeah, this is famously really, really cheap. And I think it's got good lasting power. Yeah, this is like vanilla, some kind of oud, vibe, sugar. You got incense, sandal, wooden musk. I really like this fragrance. I'm really happy to have it. Definitely gonna wear it. This could be like an everyday kind of signature scent in those colder months. It's really, really affordable. And it doesn't smell cheap, Ragba, Ragba. So I was gonna get like what's considered the men's version of Ragba, but I think this is, this one's like the female version or it's unisex. I think it's considered unisex by pretty much everyone. There's a men's version of Ragba, but when I read the um, reviews or whatever, it was like people were just saying it's like a dupe for green Irish tweed. And I don't know, whenever something's called like a dupe, I just sort of tune out and I don't want to hear it. So I opted for Ragba Wooden Tens. Oh, back and forth, yes. And this, I'm almost getting like coffee right off the bat, bat, like a sugary coffee. And I haven't had much luck with coffee since, but I like the way this smells. For me though, this has almost like, because maybe there's a burnt, a crisp, burnt kind of sugar element to it. So it almost seems sweeter than ragwa. Top notes in here are caramel, guyac wood, licorice and cedar. Middle notes are agar wood, sugar, cashmere wood, and sandalwood. Then you've got incense, vanilla, oak moss, and musk. Let me just give this a little spritz here. Yeah, this is nice. It's giving me like sweet, sugary, crispy, coffee kind of woody vibes. I like it. It's um, it's nice. It's just really nice. It was really, really affordable. It doesn't smell cheap. Oh, now I'm getting sort of maybe like a, a woody, like barnyardy, woody, rubbery. Happy to have it. And I think it was only like 20 bucks. Ragwa Wood Intense. You did? I have three fragrances left. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you've watched this, if you are watching it, I appreciate you. It means a lot to me. It also just makes these make sense. <laughs> I mean, I'm a collector anyways. I'm gonna be collecting these fragrances, but I do really like sharing this with folks and talking about them. This is like a YouTube made me do it, plus a Perfumes A Guide made me do it. I have always wanted to get this Angel. There's like Angel the Flowers collection, and I think there's like Rose, Lily, Violet, and Peony. Perfumes the Guide said, literally gave this five stars and said it was like a masterpiece. You know, they said it was like Angel, but then you get this like booming bloom of Rose. And I love Rose. So I was like really, really excited to have this. And even they even talked about the longevity and it like lasts forever. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. For me, this didn't really do it. Like, I don't even get that much Rose out of it. I do get Angel. Let's see what happens today. Cause sometimes when we're on camera, they show out a little bit more. To me, it's more fruity than regular Angel. I, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't even smell rose in here, so I don't know what's wrong with me. There's like a floral touch, but it, it doesn't even smell like rose. Yeah, I mean, it's still a nice fragrance, but I was expecting like Angel with like bare naked roses, which would be, oh my gosh, the idea of that sounds so amazing to me. That would smell so good, but that's just not what has happened. Here, that's not what's transpired. And so I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. This is why also like, you know, I love reading those books and hearing other people talk about things and how they feel and what they like, but it's honestly so different for everybody. And consider it all just entertainment because like I've spent a hundreds of dollars from that Perfumes the Guide and yeah, I'm sort of like, okay, that didn't really work. Nothing wrong with this scent. 
I will wear it. I'm happy to have it in my Mugler collection. I guess I just thought I was going to be more than happy to have it because it was going to be giving me my rose loving life. So it didn't really do that, but it's still a good fragrance. This is Alien Eau Sublime. So I love Alien and I'll get any Alien flanker I want if I want it. I have the other one. What's the other one called? Eau Extraordinaire. It's a really great summer alien. Few people have been talking about this on YouTube and I just kind of like gave in. I saw it for a good price and I was like, I'm gonna get it. And you know what? It's not like I'm gonna dislike it. I love Alien and I like the flankers. Yeah, but this is really nice. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm having that thing where I get lifted, you know, I get lifted. Yeah, it's very... It reminds me a lot of Alien Eau Extraordinaire. So for me, it's a more like, like tea-like inspiration presentation of Alien. In this fragrance in the top notes, you've got lemon, solar notes, orange, mandarin orange, and you've got some galbanum. In the mid, you've got jasmine, orange blossom, tiare flower. There's cherry blossom in here. Then in the base, it's like cashmere, white amber, vanilla, and vetiver. Yeah, this is a great take on Angel. It smells really nice. It's bright, it's fresh. It's great in the summer. For me, there is like a soapiness to it, but it's in a really great amount, so it's not, uh, doesn't deter me from liking it or wanting to wear it. It's in the way that it actually draws you in. Something that can be like challenging sometimes, but when it's done really right, it's such a plus, like it's such a draw. So this is like that for me. It's very fresh, perfect for summer, high heat. I think this would just make you feel so good. So this is Alien Eau Sublime. I know that Tom Ford can be kind of shady sometimes. I really lucked out with this one. I sniffed it before I bought it. I smelled it and I said, oh my God, yeah, I'll take it. I don't know much about this fragrance. Like I haven't heard a lot about it. I think it's kind of old. Vert Song. So this is a green fragrance, but it's also like <clears throat> deep, chocolatey even. Yeah, it's enveloping, it's warm, it's, oh, this really, really blew my mind and it's such a winner. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, right, right away. Ooh, it's, it's green, it's like ripped open green, like real green, the green flesh of a leaf or a stem or a reed, like you've got like watery, fresh, living green. You've got wood resin in here, pine, incense, balsam fir, heliotrope, boxwood, woody notes. I don't know, What's making this smell like deep, dark, chocolatey even? Like this is beguiling. It's intoxicating on the skin. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is such a gorgeous fragrance. For me, it was just like so definitive, so exactly what it is that it was like, yeah, I had to have it. Like it fascinates me, this fragrance. It's a lot. It takes me on a, a whole trip and it does like a whole thing. I got this from the cosmetics company store. So I think I literally paid like $80 for this. It is so special to me. Yeah, I love this fragrance. Oh, that green opening. It's almost like a fresh green pea or something, but then it's got like a sweet chocolate hit. It's so interesting. I've never sniffed anything like this except Actually, immediately following saying that, um, Coco Rico, when I first got it, this is what I felt like the opening was. And what I have it now, and it's like, it's missing that, that fresh green cacao vibe that I feel like I remember it having like this earthy green chocolatey vibe. Um, but this definitely has it. This is an amazing fragrance. If you can get this, if you like sort of like deep, really crispy, fresh greens, like grassy, 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 chocolatey. Yeah, uh, it's, this it's really blew my mind. It's so good and it almost makes me want to forgive Tom Ford. <sighs> wow. That's it, yo. We did it. We did it. 14 fragrances. So I don't even know what's gonna happen next or what's gonna come next because there's just been so many fragrances bought. I still have a wish list. <laughs> it's still quite long. There's a lot of things I wanna check out, some Aaron Terrence Hughes. I did order some Zyrena fragrances, which I'm really excited about. They're not here yet. It takes about six weeks um, or it's been about six weeks. I don't know. Anyways, I'm excited for them to get here. I've always wanted to try them. And if you made it this far, you're a real one. Thanks for watching.